So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate everything you need to know about Sora and its technical papers, how this amazing model is being implemented. So if you haven't been living under a rock, the whole internet is flooded with this text to video examples from Sora. My favorite one is this, where there is a fluffy monster that is sitting next to a melting red candle. Uh, look how closely the prompt is being matched with the video. There is a red candle, this is fluffy monster and it's very consistent. Now, about nine months ago, I created this video where I am showing how Hollywood level animation is being created. But the issue with this is that there is no temporal consistency. So. If you look at the background, the hair, the building, it's all changing immediately. That is because of inconsistencies of temperance. Now you can generate consistent images, not just one, but every single time. And it's because of the architectural change that OpenAI was able to make. So OpenAI hasn't released a technical research paper yet, but they were able to release this blog post, which sheds a lot of insight on how this model is works. First thing, it's a mixture of models. So it's not just one big giant neural network or transformer that is taking text and converting into videos. So first thing is they are turning visual data into patches. So just like where large language models have tokens, Sora have visual patches. So this is a cool example. It converts into a chunk of patches and then those patches are fed into Sora model. Now, video compression network. So we trained a neural network that reduces dimensionality of visual data. This network takes raw video as input and outputs a latent representation that is compressed both temporally and spatially. Sora is trained and subsequently generates videos within this compressed latent space. We also train a corresponding decoder model that maps general latent maps into pixel space. So imagine three neural networks. First one is encoding visual data into latent space. Then Sora comes into the picture and then Sora takes that latent space and do predictions on it. And then whatever output Sora gives, the decoder is able to create another video out of it. So that's how it was trained. And now because you can just feed text into Sora because it's already trained. You can generate really cool, realistic videos just based on that. Now, scaling transformers for video generation. It also has diffusion built into it. So imagine this is the frame with a lot of noise into it. Every step, Sora is trying to denoise it and get it to original image. So if you do that enough times, which is millions and billions of time, model is so good at doing it that whatever noisy image you give without even having any image in the background, just pure noise, it will be able to create an image out of that pure noise. And this scales really well. So for example, if you just have base compute, this is the image it will be able to generate or the video. But if you 4X the compute that you have available, look how realistic this dog looks and the human in the background. Still not as good as if you 32X the compute. That is just mind boggling. But look how realistic this image is. The dog, the eyes, even the eyes have a little bit of shine into it from the sun. And look how real the hand is. Because the model is so flexible, it can generate vertical or horizontal videos. So it's not very limited into, okay, you can only generate four by four images or four by four videos. Another thing they were able to figure out was that when they were training, they trained on two kinds of data set. First was compressing the video and making it into a specified format. So when you are training a neural network, you want to specify what will be your input size. So when you have lots of videos, you compress it into a specified size, such as 512 by 512, and then you feed it into the network. And then on the other hand, the second version is where you don't do that. And you just feed the video as it is without even compressing or reshaping it. They were able to find that they get better results when they don't reshape the images. So here they are saying that we compare Sora against a version of our model that crops all trained videos to be square, which is common practice when training generative models. The model trained on crop, which is on the left side, sometimes generate videos where subject is only partially in the view. So they were able to figure out that, you know what, let's not crop our images and let's not crop our videos. Maybe we will get better results. They got better results. Now language understanding, because it's a transformer, it has inherent capabilities 
capabilities of understanding language really good. Keep in mind, Transformers, the architecture of this neural network was designed to understand language and it excelled in it. So much so that LSTM or recurrent neural networks, RNNs, just went out of business. Nobody uses them anymore. So this is the example they give that a robot is wearing purple overalls and cowboy boots and strolling in India in a colorful festival. But let's say a beautiful sunset. So it is able to create that. And look at the ground. It actually looks like something from Bombay. But if we changed it to Antarctica, look, it's Antarctica. Let's say a colorful festival. See, it's still snowy you can see that everybody is wearing something warm so it understands context of the image the immersion capabilities of this model is unbelievable we will talk more about that a little bit later in the video there are several other things you can do with this model such as actually animating existing image that were generated through dolly so this image was generated via dolly and look at this dog that is animated same thing with this so imagine having an animated textbook that you can generate just by a prompt sora also has one more capability Ability, which is it not only takes your text as input but it actually has a separate neural network a really good model that takes your text as inputs and improve on it so let's say you just say oh give me a beautiful apple instead of just saying that it will take that input and generate a very descriptive text that it will feed into Sora. Something like, oh, a beautiful apple with shiny background, sunlight striking on it. So it will generate a better quality version. Now, extending and generating videos. So, so all of these video will end on a same ending screen because they were all back propagated through time. So see, San Francisco, all of them are ending on the same note, but all of them have a different starting. Or you can create amazing loops. So this video is a loop. So ending and beginning is always going to be the same. So this input video was somewhere where they have a lot of trees, but not as green as on the video on the right. Or you can mix videos. So first, this drone video flying somewhere in Rome area and this butterfly under coral reef and it have a combination of both of them right here in the middle. And the emergent capabilities that I was talking about is amazing. GPT-1 didn't have capability to understand what is the emotion of the sentence, but GPT-2 was able to do it because it's an emergent capability. Just like that, from GPT-2 to GPT-4, it has reasoning capabilities because it's so much bigger. Same thing happened. So if you scale Sora model enough, it has 3D consistency. So Sora can generate videos with dynamic camera motion as the camera shifts and operates. People in the scene elements move consistently through the three dimension space. So if you look at this video, this camera is moving through a city like Japan and a lot of flowers in the background and see all of the images, all of humans are staying consistent. Not only that, it has long range coherence. So if you look at this video, see dog in the background, it stays consistent. And this is because the model is so large enough that it has enough context understanding to generate physics simulation that changes everything interacting with the world. So if you look at this video, see the paintbrush, this is an AI generated image, but the brush strokes are staying as it is because Sora model is so large that the brush strokes and how it interacts with the paper, it's understanding, but it's not all sunshine and roses because in this video, you can see the physics is not properly understood. It is spilling the water be even before the glass is flipped or here. There is a video where somebody is running on a treadmill in reverse that's not possible that's just stupid so remember this is the technology that's just going to keep on getting better from this point this is the worst this is the worst it's ever going to be so if you like precise and sharp content like this consider subbing to the channel and see you in the next video